Well, one can resist the invasion of an army, but one cannot resist the invasion of ideas. And so goes tonight's story, my dear friends. Another fantastic one from Dr. Crippen's vault. So it's time once again to sit back and relax with your favourite drink. And listen. Perspective is reality for the perceiver. Is reality simply what we perceive through our five senses? What happens to those who perceive things that are just beyond the periphery of physical senses? What does one do if he finds himself alone in reality, the only one to perceive a lurking threat? I was getting desperate. The alien lizard people invasion was in full swing. They moved among us in disguise, and very few humans could detect them. Fortunately, I could see through their disguises, especially when they touched their noses to adjust their masks. I'm not really sure how that technology worked, but when they touched their faces, especially near their noses, I could see through the disguises for a moment. I knew that they were here to prey upon humans. To them, we were nothing but meat. Now, well, I suppose I should explain why I have this ability. I'm from a wealthy family, and my father was what, in the Washington, D.C. area, they called a Beltway Bandit. These were government contractors, especially military contractors. My parents were older when I came along. Dad was 63 and Mum was 40. I had everything growing up, yet most called me troubled. When I was part of the early Generation Medication kids who grew up with drugs to help us focus and remain attentive. ADHD was the latest excuse for bad behavior. When I was a kid, well, I was certainly capable of that. I acted out often and violently. I was preparing for what would come. My parents took me to doctors and counselors of every description until by the time I was 10 years old, the medicine cabinet in my bathroom remained constantly full. <laughs> they even dragged me to church twice a week, but nothing could change what I saw, what I knew. The medications worked against my knowledge for a while. They made me feel sluggish, and I quit taking them and returned to my rambunctious ways. No school would keep me for long, no matter how much my parents spent, and so I had private tutors and, of course, my well-educated parents to provide my education. I was the heir to a small fortune and a prestigious family name, so my parents remained desperate to get me on track, all the while pretending nothing was wrong with me. He added some therapy suggested by my dad's military friends. They rented a martial arts instructor to teach me discipline. When I turned 14, they bought me a home gym and had it installed in the garage. Before long, I was a lethal weapon, and everyone around me feared when I stopped taking my medication and had an episode. Well, I was just preparing for the invasion. I'd seen signs of it all my life, and now, as an adult, I was prepared to act. If only they could see what I did. I knew from eavesdropping on my father's conversations. People tend to ignore crazy people, even when they are in the same room. That the military had developed special technology to detect things that most could not see. I suspected they had a special division to deal with the threats that had begun to come to my attention. The lizard people. They're not really lizards. I just can't think of what else to call them. They're certainly not humans. They had no hair and delicate scales covered their faces. They had ridges over each eye, and each eye was yellow or green with vertical pupils and nictitating membranes. They appeared husky and muscular with long arms and thick legs. When they spoke, their tongues were forked, and the inside of their mouths were white and contained savage fangs. Their scales were basically green, but iridescent and gleaming. They could disguise themselves as humans, usually large, tall humans. They even covered up their hissing manner of speaking and their awful carnivore stench. They definitely possessed tech beyond ours to hide so well in plain sight. I had a very rare, natural ability to see through their subterfuges, but my special talents were inhibited by the medications I took. I knew that no one else seemed capable of detecting the creatures, so I had to remain clear-headed and look out for everyone else. 
Perhaps Dad's military connections had a way to see them, since I had noticed even more black helicopters around the DC skies than usual. Perhaps other groups, clandestine groups, would have a means to assist. In any case, it was up to me to sound the alarm and save the world. I didn't want to start with my father's friends. I assumed they were already working to stop the invasion. I decided that a secret organization that had to know and be willing to help was the Freemasons. Yeah, my dad was one, and he and I had visited the big lodge in Alexandria, Virginia, not far from our home in Fairfax. I formed a plan. I had to make a scene to gather attention and alert not only the Freemasons, but the local authorities and the public. I would need weapons and protection. There was a store across from the lodge that sold specialty items. I could get what I needed from them, then enlist the Freemasons and the Black Helicopter Unit to aid me. I took my mother into driving me down to Alexandria to spend the afternoon. She thought I was medicated and readily agreed. I knew that my birth had taken a toll on her health and vitality. To give birth to such a special man must have drained her. She took opportunities when I was behaving the way she and therapists thought I should to let me wander through society in hopes that I'd learn normal behaviours. Poor mum. I didn't want to deceive her, but I had to save her and my dad along with the rest of the planet from these monstrous invaders. I went to the store window and peered in to see if they had what I needed. I knew that firearms wouldn't do. The aliens had technology that protected them. I needed cold steel. <gasps> they did. I found a loose piece of concrete curbing. People were always running over the curbs at intersections. I used it to break the window of the store and take two items from the display. A horned helmet, like a fantasy viking, and a basket-hilted sword like they carried at the Scottish Games events I'd attended in the area. Well, it was too hot for further armour, but the helmet and hand protection would do perfectly. All I had to do now was spot and kill a lizard person. Once they were down, their disguises would fail, and everyone else would see. I took up a position near the lodge entrance and looked around. Out over the harbour, I saw two black helicopters. <gasps> I had allies. I raised a sword in salute to my valiant comrades and called out to the Freemasons, who were surely arrayed just inside the doorway. To me! Rally to me! We must stop the invaders and take back our planet! I frantically searched among the passers-by, but there were no lizard people. Perhaps they knew to avoid the lodge. I'd made a tactical error. I realised it as two Alexandria Police Department units arrived and officers stepped out and drew their firearms. I knew that the lizards had infiltrated the various and numerous law enforcement agencies in the area, but the most officers were still human. These two were, so I cooperated. There was a lizard creature working at the jail, but I couldn't get to him. I was only able to stare hatred at him through the windows of my cell. Oh, we were in so much trouble as a species. Oh, the lizards had won this round. There could not have been anyone else with my abilities, and I was once again medicated and under the care of a psychiatrist, a lizard person in disguise. I knew she was, but I had to remain calm around her, or they'd realise I could detect them. And then I'd be a special target. Maybe I was happy. I played the game and took my medication for a few months. Eventually, I was able to avoid or spit up the doses. I became quite clever at this game. I worked out intently and focused on my martial arts training. I was on my sixth instructor, but I had learned from each before. They each in turn declared that I was not learning discipline or focus, only destruction. Only I knew how positive an assessment that was. The lizard people deserved destruction. I was confined to home until I had behaved long enough to lull my parents once again. Oh, they were always dependable and loyal. I knew they would eventually let me roam again. And yet this time, they did not. No matter how well I behaved or how much I pleaded, they would not let me go out on my own. Perhaps the lizard people had gotten to them, made threats. Surely the aliens had infiltrated the government, maybe even the military and Dad's friends. Perhaps Dad was unsure of who was whom. 
Well, I could offer to detect the lizards for him, but Dad had become distant with me as I'd entered my late teens and early twenties. Likely he wanted to protect me, but I was the one who needed to save him and everyone else. I used the time to develop a new tactical plan. Perhaps I didn't need to slay a lizard. Perhaps I could simply kill their disguise mechanisms. Well, I'd have to start in some place less frequented by respectable people. Yeah, I'd go after dark. I'd figured out that the lizard people did not like bright sunshine. This time I would not wear armor, but dress lightly and be ready to flee. My only weapons would be my fists and my training. I was strongly built from weightlifting and I knew I could deliver potent strikes that would destroy the technology of the alien predators. I found my moment, when Dad was sick and in the hospital. Mum had gone to visit him since he was in grave condition. It was late autumn and the light faded quickly. It was cold, but I dressed lightly to be able to run. I went to my room and, on the way, told the cleaning lady and my nurse that I didn't feel good and was going to bed early. They looked relieved, <laughs> the blind fools. I slipped out of my window into the cool evening. Now, my folks had always ensured that I had some cash on me, so I knew I could follow through with my plan. It was time to get revenge on those murderous savages. I took the train into Arlington. I knew that if anyone noticed I was missing, that they'd first look at the mall in Fairfax, and then at the harbour in Alexandria. Those were my two favourite hangouts, but I'd rarely visited Arlington, and certainly not the bar scene. I took the train, one of the best features of the metro region. I noted no lizard people in my car, but there had been a couple at the station. They were getting off the train as I got on, so I didn't have time to simply start with them. It was post-rush hour, but still prior to 9pm, so there'd be plenty of happy hour guests where I was going. I first went to Courthouse Square, but the crowd was light and there were no nightclubs in sight. I got back on the train and returned to the previous stop. There was nothing much at all around the area, and I began to fear that I'd have to go into Georgetown to find the venue I needed. Then I saw a young man, tall and slender with a high and tight military haircut, a soldier and a human. I asked him if there was a bar or nightclub in the area, and he directed me to a small place down the road a few blocks, a neighbourhood bar, whiteys or blackies or something like that, it didn't matter because when I arrived, it was busy. Perfect. I set up my hunting stand near a group that was playing darts and drinking heavily. I glowed at the patrons around me and looked intently for a lizard to slip his or her disguise. The big fellow in the group playing darts stood to take his turn. Oh, he was certainly large enough. And there, just after his second toss, he scratched his nose. And for a moment could see that he was indeed an alien lizard man. He threw his last dart and the electronic panel flashed to indicate he'd hit his target. And that's when I stepped up and hit my own target. His nose. When I stepped up, he looked confused. My face was full of fury and I struck before he understood what was happening. Uh, he reacted quickly and his friends all leapt up to help, but I ran. I ran quickly because I knew that they would not chase me. I'd destroyed his disguise mechanism. They would see what he truly was, and this would be my initial triumph. I'd finally won a battle and struck a blow for humanity. I ran for a full block before I paused to look back at the entrance. I saw that a few people had emerged from the bar and looked in my direction, for the man who had just saved them. One of the bigger men, Likely another lizard man still in disguise, yelled toward me. I didn't hear what he said, nor did I care. I just had to unveil more of these creatures. I had to get to the train station and head into Georgetown. I'd definitely cause a stir there when others could finally see what I saw. I made it to the metro entrance, but I saw that a couple of men, no, males, lizard men, had followed me. I was about to run down the stairway to board the train when an Arlington Police Department unit pulled up to the curb. Two officers exited and told me to stop. I did as they told me. One of them, the driver, was a large older man. I wasn't sure what he was, so I bided my time and remained quiet. 
If I exposed an officer as a lizard, I would definitely get the attention I needed to expose them and save the world. The human officers would never stand for it. I waited in the back of the car, handcuffed and, for the moment, defenseless. I saw the officers speak to the two men, and they were clearly talking about me. I recognized one as the lizard man I'd struck. Oh no, I thought. He was able to repair his disguise, and likely just killed all the witnesses at that bar. The older officer instructed the young, slightly built officer to call for another unit to transport me to jail while they interviewed the witnesses at the bar. Shortly afterward, another police car arrived, and the large, older officer spoke to the even larger but younger transport officer. Clearly about me, but quietly enough that I couldn't hear. The big officer escorted me to his car and we headed toward the jail. I suspected that both he and the older officer might be lizard men, but I wasn't sure yet, since many officers were largely built. And then it happened. He sneezed a couple of times and was about to do so again when he grabbed his nose to stifle the third expulsion. His hand had slipped and I had found my new target. I determined to remain silent until I'd exposed him. I knew that when humans spoke, the lizard aliens could read our thoughts. I did my best to keep my features neutral, to suppress the image of rage that I felt towards this monster. At the jail, the sheriff's deputies did some paperwork, took my fingerprints and photographed me, and put me in a cell to await the magistrate on duty. When the lizard officer came to the cell to escort me to the magistrate, was elated. I would expose him in front of a court official and everyone would know. I tried to hide my excitement as we entered the small hearing room in the booking area. There was a desk and behind it sat a large woman with a prominent nose. As we entered the room, I noted in horror that she wiped her nose with a tissue. And for that fraction of a moment, her features shifted. <gasps> Another lizard. I was shaken and for a moment I was unsure what to do. I waited and formulated my plan. Surely the deputies in the booking area would come to my aid once I destroyed the disguises on these two. Well, I hadn't planned on taking two at a time. Well, apparently, while well, my mind was occupied, the magistrate had spoken to me, asked a question. The big lizard officer leaned in and said, Wake up, buddy. The magistrate needs your answer. And that's... When I struck, I smashed his jaw and pushed him toward the inner wall. I then tried to leap across the desk and do the same to the lizard magistrate. Unfortunately, the lizard officer was too quick. He grabbed me around the waist and tackled me to the floor. I knew I was in trouble, so I went limp. I knew that the lizard aliens preferred prey that would fight to the last. They had to play with their food like big reptilian cats. The deputies entered the room and put handcuffs on me once again. They took me through a door, away from the magistrate's room and the lizards. Oh, I wanted to tell them. I wanted to scream, but the deputies didn't seem to care that the lizard officer was exposed. They must have been in league with the beast. <sighs> Traitors to humanity. Oh, this conspiracy ran deep indeed. Surely they served the aliens to save their own sorry lives. Perhaps they'd been promised some reward. But they didn't understand the lizard people. They would never honour an agreement with what they considered cattle. The deputies put me in an open area and removed the handcuffs. They told me to remain in the area and pointed out a phone in case I wanted to make a call for someone to come and bail me out of jail. I just sat and stared. It was likely a trap to catch my poor parents. Poor, sick dad and worried mum. I sat quietly and contemplated my next move. Then, the hairs on the back of my neck rose, and I had that sickening feeling of a monster creeping up on its prey, a feeling emanating from behind me. I noticed a fat, dark-complected man sitting in the chair behind me and off to one side. I didn't have to see his disguise slip. I knew what he was. Oh, my anger rose up, and I stood, turned, and punched him hard in the forehead. His disguise shattered, and I ran in triumph into one of the open cells along the back wall. I let the deputies handle their buddy. Now the two deputies arose and approached the seating area. The fat man wailed that I'd hit him. 
Neither deputy saw the danger as they walked past him and towards me. Oh, this was bad. The entire force of both departments was working with the lizard aliens. They simply closed the cell door and ensured that the lock engaged. And then one of them caught over the intake nurse, and the other made a phone call. I was left to my own devices. I paced for a while. I sat on the bare metal bunk. I stood at the door. I squatted in front of the door. I glared hatred at everyone I saw. Traitors, each and every one. My plan had failed once again. I should definitely have spoken with Dad's friends, all the Freemasons, enlisted some trusted allies before I enacted my plan. God, I was learning this the hard way. Eventually another burly deputy, a sergeant by the two stripes on his sleeves, came in and looked through the windows at me. He spoke to the deputies, and then took a seat at a computer and began to type. At first he reminded me of a bear, but then, sure enough, he rubbed his nose for a moment, and there was the telltale iridescent sheen to his features, oh, just for a flash. Two of the deputies left the area and took an elevator somewhere. Only the sergeant and a female deputy remained. This was my last chance to prove what these things were. While I was glaring at the monster aliens, I noted that there were cameras all over the area. Perhaps someone in the organization was still loyal to our species. I tapped on the window, and the sergeant looked up at me. He approached and asked what I wanted. I told him that I wanted to call my family, and this cell had no phone. He opened the door and stepped back out of reach. He told me to walk to the cell at the end of the row, since it had a phone. He started to tell me how to dial out, and that's when I swung. I hid his mouth, but he saw it coming and at the last second rolled back. I was already prepared and had turned to run when I felt his fist clip my left jaw. I saw sparks for a moment, but then I ran, only to realize that I was in jail. I had nowhere to go. I reached the walls between the cells, and the big sergeant was on top of me. He pushed me up against the wall as I shook in terror. Oh, his talons were exposed. The razor-sharp claws paused to strike and slice me to ribbons. I broke out in a cold sweat. The female deputy had arrived to help, but as I remained limp, the big lizard bear simply placed me in a solid hold. About that time, the female deputy sprayed us both with pepper spray. Well, it stung, but I think most of it hit the lizard sergeant. He dragged me over to the cell where he'd been taking me, and pushed me onto the mattress of the metal bunk. He had my arm locked out straight and twisted, so that I was helpless. I looked at the cell walls, and they faded away, and I saw, approaching, an army of lizard aliens, slavering and flexing their talons. Everything was a blur for a while, and the next thing I knew, I was in a different cell. This one only had a hole in the floor for a toilet and a mattress, not even a blanket. I used the hole to urinate, then took up a stance by the big window in the metal door. It was dark in the area, the way the lizards liked it. I remained alert until I could see that sunlight had begun to appear through the windows of the other cells that lined the block. During the night, the deputy and nurse on duty had watched me closely. They left a cup of water on the fold-down slot on my door. Shortly, the lights came on and a new crew took over from the night shift. A nice doctor with a thick accent of some kind spoke to me. He asked if I was on any medications and whether I was under treatment. I remained silent. I would wait for the video and simple word of mouth to spread the word. Maybe my plan had worked after all. I was once again on the hunt, in my stand, waiting for the enemy to reveal itself. Several minutes after the doctor left, the new nurse came over to see me. The new deputy loomed behind her and warned her not to get too close to the slot. By now I could tell which of the staff members were lizards, even if they didn't touch their faces. Oh, something had changed. My powers had grown. She spoke. I stared and said nothing. She tried again, and again I stared. This was no new game for me. She leaned down to the slot. Perhaps she thought I hadn't heard her, or maybe she wanted to sniff me before she attempted to feast on my flesh. Honey, you need to eat some breakfast and take your medicine. 
It'll make you sick if you don't eat. Well, I saw through her smile. I saw her fangs, her vertically slit pupils. Yeah, she was trying to trick me. I reached through the slots and grabbed her collar and pulled her toward my fist of vengeance. And then I stepped back and put up my hands in surrender. Well, later that morning, the deputies took me back to the magistrate's office. There was a man on duty, a slight, elderly fellow. He spoke directly and atonally at me. He was clearly human, and likely a forlorn prisoner of the lizard aliens. Then the deputies walked me through a sally port and into the magistrate's lobby where my dad's attorney and my mum's driver awaited. I was soon drugged and rendered impotent, once again dragged before doctors and therapists and preachers. I watched TV at every opportunity, hoping for news of a human uprising. None came, and I began to despair. Between the lack of news and the medications, I became despondent. The doctors told me that, regardless of what I saw, the lizard aliens were not real, and I was not to act when I saw them. I told them that I would not act, and I meant it. I no longer saw the point in trying to reveal, much less defeat, the invaders. The war was lost. Humanity would be devoured. A few months later, I attended court. All of the lizard creatures I'd exposed or tried to expose testified. My doctors testified. My father had died around the time I'd returned home on bail. I thought that my mother blamed me. It was the lizards. She sat in the courtroom and stared at the floor in despair. If only she knew what I'd done, she'd have died from fright. When I was called, I told the truth. It was all I had left. Our family attorney asked me about the medications, and I, glassy-eyed and nearly drooling, told him that I'd been taking them and taken them before the trial. I told him and the courtroom that I believed that the lizard aliens were real and a clear and present danger to humanity. I also told him that I intended to follow my doctor's instructions and avoid acting on what I knew. It was a bench trial and the judge sentenced me to three months in Central State for evaluation and treatment. Central State Mental Detention Facility was for dangerously insane people with violent tendencies. Oh, the conspiracy continued. I knew that I would go there and they would try to recruit me or kill me. I thought I'd given up, but this was the first time the state had taken control of me. My father's influence had saved me several times before, but not this time. The aliens had me. Oh, the stakes were now much higher. Perhaps others at Central State also had the power to see the lizard people. Perhaps I could find allies, enlist their aid. Perhaps the war wasn't over after all. So, oh, that was a bit of a sad one in the end, wasn't it, really? Oh, dear. Oh, dearie, dearie, dearie me. Yep, yeah, so, um, somebody who thought there was an invasion who may or may not have been completely deluded. What do you think? Was he telling the truth, or was he just perceiving it from his point of view? Oh. Ah, <sighs> well, I will be back again on Sunday, perhaps. Um, very busy with my, um... Christmas special, but I'll try and get something out on the uh, cereal Sunday, as usual. But if not, then Monday is big go time, yes. My, my Christmas party is in full effect, and it'll be out on Monday, and it, I'm telling you now, it is worth tuning into. Well, that's enough for me for one week, but I will be back again very soon, be it Monday, be it Sunday, I don't know. But until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, 
Send it to Dr. Creepin's vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now, looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>